Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome to the next video in this special Halloween week. So today we're going to continue with our challenge. But before we do that, I actually want to jump and uh, take a look at the bolt. So if you guys are not aware, we just uh, or in in yesterday's video, I added a link to our Google Drive folder for student submissions. And I'm going to take a look and see if we have anything right now. And yes, we do. So we have this submission by Simone uh, Vergamini. I believe uh, I pronounced it properly. Is that Italian? Maybe. And uh, he did the mummy. So that was Monday's monster, which is looking very good. I see that you used uh, some of the techniques, it seems, to, to create a different... Uh all the different effects and it looks good man there's a couple of anatomy things that definitely need a little bit of work but if especially if you took the challenge to do it in only 30 minutes this is a very good like a blocking for the whole thing so uh the submissions are gonna be open all week guys so if you want to submit something for me to see for everyone else to see i'm showcasing it uh, this of course uh, to all of you guys so if you want to do that then just check the link on the description down here to the google drive folder and you can just drop an image and i'll be happy to showcase it for you now let's go over here with our little monster family Yesterday, we uh, hunted down uh, Frankenstein and we created our own version. Uh, we've seen some very good comments. People seem to like the series. So uh, thank you again. Make sure to uh, like, subscribe and share, you know, all the drills. And uh, let's just go into it. Let's just uh, roll a D8 and see which one we get. Remember the rule, if we get the same number that we got before, we just roll again until we get a different number. And we have the number four. Oh, Dracula. Okay, so... I mean, what better way to uh, start a Wednesday than with Dracula? I'm just going to move my microphone a little bit here so that I can see. And right now, uh, there's 10 seconds until we hit the two-minute mark. So I'm going to start right at the two-minute mark uh, and get at 30 minutes uh, from there. So that's four, three, two, one, and we go. So uh, for this Dracula, I actually had something in mind for, for this character. I'm going to be doing a sort of uh, animalistic uh, like Dracula uh, character. So I'm actually going to push the, the silhouette like back like this. So I'm thinking about uh, Dracula on its transformed uh, form, right? So, so it's uh, when it's on a, like on a vampire state. So let's like really bring the forms here. This is going to be the head, of course. And I want this like very accelerated shape. I'm going to go a little bit more creature-ish and I'm going to have this sort of like accelerate the shape. I'm going to use my um, a snake hook and let's just go with like some very long ears. There we go. And now we're going to start adding like the sort of like vampire sort of look. Now I do want to have this sort of like humanoid uh, mouth and, and shape here on the, on the front, but still keep it like bat like. So it's got this very long ears, very like spiny things. Um, this is where the shoulders would be, right? And then the pectoral muscle. There we go. I was really hoping to get a, a, a uh, another character like this, like a Dracula. Uh, the one I'm really scared about, and <laughs> uh, hopefully I don't jinx myself and, and get it tomorrow, it's a Frankenstein's Bride. So I'm, I'm really scared about getting that one because female, female anatomy, female faces are very delicate. And uh, you really need to focus on, on creating something very, very nice. Look at that. That, that looks cool. Now, um... I'm not sure if I want to do the wings. I mean, I kind of want to add like the arms and stuff. Uh, so kind of like this sort of shape, you know, it's kind of like a wing going back. But again, I'm not sure if I'm going to I'm going to be able to. Do I think I think we might be able to do it. So so let's try it. Let, let's see where we can go. And then if, if we don't have enough time, we'll just we'll just leave them to for the next time. So I'm going to have this like uh, this is like the arm. And then from here. We're gonna have like the forearm going like back like this. And it's kind of like a, if the wings were uh, bent, right? So we're gonna grab this guy's right here, bring the put point here, invert the mask. Now let's just like rotate them out like this. So again, so it kind of looks like the like the wings are coming. Out. I'm not sure. To be honest, I, I don't think it's gonna look that good. So so I'm just gonna keep it on the on the torso, but I'm gonna I'm gonna focus a little bit more on the torso. I think with Frank yesterday we only did like half of the body here, uh, since it's gonna be like a like a naked vampire uh, when he's like hunting down things. I think we can focus a little bit more on anatomy. So there's one thing about anatomy and about muscles. I know I've been talking about uh, like anatomy a lot in the next, in the last couple of videos. Um, some people do seem interested in an anatomy course. If you guys, uh, if that's something that you want to see, make sure to leave the comments because we we're annotating every single suggestion. We've had suggestions for environments. We have suggestions for like weapons and like cars and uh, uh, there's suggestions for pretty much everything you can imagine. And I'm happy to keep producing content as long as you guys uh, like it and as long as you guys uh, keep us uh, keep uh, supporting us. 
So there we go. Let's dynamic real quick. And uh, I'm actually going to start increasing the resolution here because I want to start adding some detail here on the face. So that's 600. That's a little bit too much, but that's fine. So on the eyes, we're going to keep it really small. Maybe what about we give it like creepy eyes, like double eyes or triple eyes? I think double eyes might be good. So whenever I like to add an eye, like an extra set of eyes, I always try to follow the anatomy principle of uh, making sure that there's like a sigmatic bone or something similar supporting that eye, because otherwise the, the eyeball will just be floating around like a, I don't know, like a bug or something. And, and in mammals, you usually have this sort of like a facial structure that supports the whole, the whole thing. Um, I'm not sure what kind of mouth I want for, for the character. I know that the nose for like vampires and stuff or, or uh, bats are, are like like really like gross and stuff. So I'm gonna go with something like this. I think we're gonna do like two fangs because vampires have fangs, right? On the front where they yeah, bite you in. Um, this thing's a little bit too high. There we go. Uh, but this one I think I'm gonna do because I think if I do upper, upper uh, like fangs, it might look like a like a sort of, uh, like a saber tooth. Is that the name, saber tooth tiger? Yeah, right? So I'm not sure like that. I think it might look good to have like this, right? Like some very like big tusks here on the on the bottom side. So I'm, I'm, we're still gonna have some teeth on the, on the front side as well. Uh, but I think like the, some tusks over here might be might be a good idea as well. It's kind of like a, have you guys, do you guys remember like the trolls from uh, from again World of Warcraft, well, that that kind of thing. I'm gonna go with that, like a very long mouth going all the way to the side, like this. There we go. And then the nose, I actually don't have enough reference, so I'm gonna look for bat nose. It's not nose, it's nose with, without the U. Come on, Abraham, you need to teach them proper English as well. I only speak Spanish and I speak uh, English. When I was in high school, I learned a little bit about uh, German, uh, Dutch, Dutch, but uh, I think I can understand it. <laughs> Probably not speak it so well, but at least if I get lost in Germany or in Austria, uh, I'll be able to survive and ask for a glass of water <laughs> and where the toilet is. But yeah, how many languages do you guys know? There we go. Look at that. So that looks cool. Now let's append and I'm going to append a sphere. Let's bring this uh, sphere forward. Let's, I mean, dynamic solo. So I'm going to remove that. I'm going to use my move brush to give it this sort of like tusky vibe. I'm going to go like a really, really intense here. That's dynamesh, of course. And the one that I really like to use is trim dynamic because it's going to give me this sort of like jaggedy edge uh, all around the, the, the tusk. So there we go. So again, I'm doing Dracula, but in its a vampire shape too. To again, to try and and do something a little bit different to make it make it our own, right? Like give it our own original spin to it. So let's bring this in. Let's bring it out. Usually, would like to have the, like enough uh, like far apart so that you can see through it. Like we, we don't want this thing to be uh, colliding with the with the eyes, right? Like blocking the eyes. And we're gonna say C plugin, um, ba -ba -ba, subtle master, and a mirror. I'm gonna hit OK, and there we go. So now we have the, the tusks right there. Now on the front here, I definitely want to have like a sharper uh, mouth. So I'm gonna add like this sort of like spike here on the on the front to make it like really, really, really sharp. There we go. See, that's gonna give it like this very aggressive looking uh, effect. We we'll still need to add uh, more things, of course. Uh, there we go. Let's let's remove a little bit of the of the bottom part here that will have like some sort of chin and again to to like further like have this sort of like sharp and accelerated form i'm gonna give him like this like pointy pointy chin on the on the bottom like this let's see how that looks i think that looks okay this things of course would be like moving downwards and that's where we would have the mouth and uh, now we can think about like the anatomy of the neck. So I'm definitely gonna push this neck like up like this. And if he has like a very long neck, that means he's gonna have like a, usually like a broad uh, back like this. There we go, that looks cool. And remember the, the sternocleidomastoideus muscle that we talked about yesterday? So even though this is like a sort of creature stuff or creature type of thing, we will still have this sort of like effect coming down. We would still have like the clavicles right about there. 
they would have this. And then there's this technique. People do this a lot for, for monsters. And they create this like very long fibers to create like this sort of like effect. I'm actually gonna start like from the bottom part like this. And then we start creating like this fan out like section. There we go. And I, uh, I've seen this, like a lot of people do it where, where they will push the, the, um, the sternum out and create this sort of like shape. And now they're just like, they would inflate the muscles right about here while, while giving it the volume. And that will create like this very, very creepy look. Now there's a, a fold that we have right here. Male characters usually have a little bit more intense than, than female characters, which is right here, the del delta pectoral group, I believe it's called. Uh, and it's this sort of like division right there on the, on the deltoid we're gonna have there. Now on this side, we'll have the, the uh, serratus. We talked about this once when we were doing the mummy. So that's the serratus. And very important, we'll have the trapecius, not the trapecius, the latissimus dorsi, which is a very, very big muscle that we have here on the back. It actually originates or, or um, yeah, originates on the, on the back here, but it goes all the way to the, to the arm. And it's this sort of like a big, big mass here. Boxers. I have this like super developed because uh, that's one of the uh, muscles that you use to pull the the arm back, uh, and we're almost at the ten minute mark. I think I think we're good for like a, for like a base shape. I don't think this is this is looking too bad. Let's go with the ears a little bit. I'm taking a look here of my reference. And we're gonna have like this very thin ears, going all the way to the top there. There we go. Let's really carve this in and then create like a very, very simple effect over here. There's like a, they, they have like this sort of like banding I'm seeing on the reference. So I'm going to add this sort of like banding. I, I guess it's to catch sound a little bit better or something. I don't know. I'm not a, <laughs> I'm not an expert in bats, but uh, it, it looks cool. And I'm definitely going to add a little bit more like spikiness to the whole thing. So let's add like like certain like, again, like indications of sharp and aggressive shapes like coming over here. Yeah, like like those little like little horns there. That kind of looks cool. Again, it's uh, it's to try and get this into like a nice position. I'm gonna push this eyes a little bit closer in there. And uh, uh, eventually we're gonna have to add the eyes, of course, to to really like bring them in. Ooh, that, that's cool. I think I think we're, we're in, a, in a good position here. Um, yeah, let's add the eyes. So I'm going to go append. I'm going to do another sphere. And I'm going to try to make this a little bit faster. So I'm just going to create a quick sphere here. Position it where we want it to be. So I think the upper eye is going to be slightly smaller than the uh, lower eye. So this one's going to be right about there. And then you can press Control Alt and just drag, and that's going to duplicate the element. Now, just be very mindful when you do that, uh, you need to make sure that you assign new polygroups because when you do that, the, the duplicated element does not have a new polygroup. And that's going to create a little bit of an issue. So I'm just going to hit other groups here. And now when we do mirror, you should have uh, the four eyes because if you don't do the auto groups, sometimes you only get like one part of pair of eyes because it thinks that the other one like does not exist or something. Um, it, it's a it's a process that it uses uh, to kind of ignore that polygroup and, and delete that polygroup from the others. So we're going to go here. And we're going to add like the eye backs on both sides. And then, of course, we need to make the eyes angry. So let's go for like this very like elongated kind of like viper like shapes. I think that's gonna look very nice there. Let's do the same one or the same thing for this one. So make it angry. And this will be like the eyebrow. Doing monsters is super fun. Like I love doing monsters. Unfortunately, it's not something that I get a lot. Like uh, most of the times I do characters. Uh, that's my usual line of work. But I, I, I wish I had a little bit more. A monster work because it's always it's always fun to do monsters. The cool thing about monsters is that you can go really really crazy with with a lot of things, and it's it's always gonna look like cool. So as long as you follow of course proper form and proper anatomy and stuff, you're gonna get some very nice results in in the, with very little work. So as you can see here, I'm adding just some like extra wrinkles to to define where the where the general shapes are gonna be. Just like fading out. So from big wrinkles, we go to smaller wrinkles. Uh, right about here, we're gonna have this. 
Uh, I need to pause real quick, guys. You probably are hearing the, um, what's the word, the WhatsApp uh, alert. So that tells me that it, this might be a little bit important. So I'm gonna pause, hands out, like no no movement. You, you, are, you look at the monster, I'm not moving anything. I'm not gonna use extra time, be right back. Okay, I'm back. So just continue here, as you see, no movement. No, no extra time. So uh, hopefully you guys can forget that uh, it wasn't important at the end of the day. Uh, but um, I, I need to check. We have a little baby, so uh, I need to be um, alert in case anything is needed. So there we go. Now I think I think that looks good. I think it's it's not looking bad, right? So let's have a little bit more detail here on the on the like the clavicles and stuff. And um, damn, I, I love to have more time to do to do the the wings because I think the wings would like really really benefit this this vampire but I'm scared that uh like we're, we're 15 minutes in and I'm scared that I'm not gonna have enough time to do so and and uh, be and, and have like a like an incomplete element but you know what let's do it let's do the wings and the reason I'm gonna do the wings is because yesterday we already did uh some like skin detail and stuff so I hope you guys are gonna forg forgive me if we don't finish like all like high frequency detail and and at least we can learn something new with with the wings so uh what I'm gonna do with the wings is I am gonna append the sort of like demonic wings here on the on the back and uh, I'm gonna do that with C spheres so I'm gonna go sub tool append oop append C sphere and then this seat here, I'm just gonna move it. Oh, not that one, this guy. I'm gonna move it so that it's inside of the character. Let's turn on transparency. And then I'm gonna, with symmetry turn on, I'm gonna create like the like the joints from where the wings are gonna be like protruding. So I'm gonna keep them here close to the like the the uh, um, the shoulder blades. And there we go. So wings are pretty much like arms. Uh, the only difference is that the long little fingers are like the, um, what's the word? They're like the, yeah, the fingers become like this long uh, thing. So again, let's take a look here quickly. I know this is taking time for my sculpting, but uh, bat wings, but it's uh, it's important. So as you can see, this is what we have. So that little bat here, it has this like arm, very long forearm and then super, super long uh, legs. So this is kind of like what we're going for. It's, again, as you can see, it's, it's very similar to an arm. So I'm gonna use my move brush or W to move this, move this up. That will be my, my uh, forearm. And then let's create another one that's going to be the arm, which is going to be longer. And then from here, how many fingers do we have? So it's one, two, three, four fingers. And there's just like, like a little thumb on the top. So I'm going to draw the little thumb there. And then I'm going to do one and move it. I'm going to do two and move it. I'm going to do three and move it. It's probably gonna be the four. I need a fourth one, so let's let's move this, move this, and move this. I know there's a little bit of overlap there. That's fine. We'll fix it, and then oop, and then move it. Let's scale this up a little bit. There we go. Then I'm gonna press. I'm gonna start dragging and press Shift so that the new C sphere that we're creating has the same as size as the previous one. And if we take a look at this, you can see this one goes like down. So this one would go like let's say there. And this one would go like there. And then this one, oh, W. And then this one would go, no, W. There we go, we'll go like there. And then finally, uh, this one would go like there. So that's like the, like the whole wings. Now you can see, I, I don't like the fact that the wings are all pointing to the same direction. So I'm gonna go to this one. I'm gonna hit R to rotate. And let's rotate this guy's back. Um, let's see if I can rotate. There we go, like this. So there, they have this sort of like uh, incline thing. I'm actually gonna bring this guy's. Let's see if we can. There we go. That's a little bit nicer. Cool. So now I'm gonna press Q to give this uh, two divisions each. There we go. And then with double G, I'm just gonna give it a little bit of curvature to the wings, right? Because we don't want like completely straight wings. We want to have this sort of like very nice curvature. Now we are like pushing things in and out of perspective, which is fine. And this is what we're going to have. Um, I'm now going to go into uh, adaptive skin. I'm going to say make adaptive skin and it's going to create a skin based on those C spheres. I'm going to say sub tool, append, and we're going to append that skin that I just created, which is this one right here. The C spheres, we don't need it anymore, so we can turn them off. 
you can see we have this very nice skin and I am going to push this up and I'm going to select this guy. I'm going to say merge, merge down so that we combine both elements. There we go. Turn off transparency and dynamish. That's going to combine both elements. And now we can work on the anatomy. And again, as I mentioned, this is pretty much an arm anatomy. So let's go here and we're going to have a deltoid like coming into the, to the center here of the eye, the arm or the wing <laughs> rather. So we're going to have this sort of like very intense like deltoid muscle. Uh, this is not, uh, of course, like real. Like I don't believe there's any animal that has the wing anatomy like this. But as long as you follow like general principles of, an of anatomy, you should be able to create something that looks believable, even though it's not, uh, it's not, uh, it's not real. I think uh, in Dungeons and Dragons we call that a very similitude, which is when you create a story that, of course, it's not real. Uh, but the way you you present it uh, with the constraints and laws and things that you kind of like built on on it, uh, it, it makes it seem like very real, right? So so that's uh, I think the word is a very similitude, uh, which is when something uh, is believable even though it's not real. Okay, so it's not true, but it's believable. So as you can see here, like this sort of anatomy is going to give us that that kind of effect. And then here we're going to have like this will be like the muscles from the forearm. And then super, super thin lines going forward. So we'll have something like this. And then super, super thin lines going forward. Here's where we'll have like an elbow. So I'm going to like draw the elbow. And there's a lot of muscles here called the flexors, the extensors. Go all the way into the hand. And then the hand, of course, becomes a little bit thinner. Which, again, since this is a quick skull, we can, we can get away with some like inconsistency or, or, or mistakes on the anatomy, and, and we should be fine. There we go. But that looks pretty cool, right? Pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Now, uh, for the wings themselves, how are we doing on time? Okay, we have 10 minutes, uh, 10 minutes, 10 exact minutes to uh, to finish this. So for the wings themselves, let's just add a little bit there. Uh, these guys, as you can see, they, they pretty much fall into a plane, which is great for me because it's going to save me some time. So I'm going to append a plane. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Plane 3D, there we go. And we are going to scale this up. Uh, when you want to see double-sided, remember you go down here to the uh, display properties and you say double. So we can say both sides of the normal. So we're going to try and rotate this so that it fits, it fits roughly the plane at which the wings are at position. Might not be perfect, but we should be able to get something quite close like this. So that, that that's actually pretty darn good. So I'm gonna do that. Let's scale this up. Let's move it forward like this. There we go. So, so yeah, as you can see, that's that's pretty damn close. Like for for this spit sculpt, I think this is gonna be uh, as close as we can get. And I'm gonna use a a tool that I don't think we've used before called the knife lasso. Uh, and what this will do is it will cut polygroups wherever I like cut this thing. So if I do this, you can see that we just created a line right there. Uh, and then we can do like, like say. Oh, you can say like go here, 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 and here. And as you can see, we, we create that like sort of uh, effect right there. And now I'm gonna go into uh, select lasso. Actually, I think I can go polygroups, other groups. No, it's not gonna work. Um, a group by group change points. Does that work? No, it doesn't work. Uh, merge similar groups. Trying to see if we can get any of these ones to work. No. Okay, that's fine. So I'm just gonna go and select lasso then, and I'm gonna be very careful here. And now that we have that cut done, it should be a little bit easier to get this sort of effect. I'm gonna say delete hidden, of course, and then let's grab our knife lasso again. And again, let's, uh, actually, I'm gonna go a little bit lower there, 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 and there. And the reason we wanted, or why I wanna do this is so that when I do the select lasso, the cut is a little bit cleaner because otherwise we would get like this sort of like pixelation which as you can see, we still get a little bit of it, uh, but we should be able to clean some of this out. There we go, and get like a sharper curvature. I'm not mad if we get like a weird curvature, like that's fine. I just wanna get something that works. There we go, so we do delete hidden. And I'm gonna go into geometry, uh, C remesher, and let's C remesh this thing so that we can clean up a little bit. There we go, that's way, way better as you can see. Uh, let's go half, and half, and half. Perfect. I'm going to use my move brush to start pushing these points like closer to where it's supposed to be, create a sort of like wing membrane. 
even if we have like a couple of holes, I, I don't think I'm, I'm I would be like against those. It kind of looks interesting. So here, just it's just a matter of again like pushing these things where they're supposed to be. There we go. Get it closer, closer. It's not gonna be perfect, but it should give us a good result, right? So from nothing to this wings, I think I think that's a good progress, right? Like we, we've done bandages, we did skin and, and a little bit of cloth yesterday. Now we're doing uh, wings, so that, that looks cool. Now I'm definitely gonna go here into dynamics of division. I'm gonna give it one dynamics of division, and I'm gonna give it thickness, similar to what we did with the with the cloth, remember? And this is gonna allow me to sculpt on this thing without actually having to worry about like double sided things. So I am gonna give it a little bit of thing. There we go, something like that. And now I am gonna use my clay build up just to create this sort of like effect, right? So we definitely need to, I'm gonna divide this a couple of times. Remember, we're, we're dividing a plane uh, and, and Seavers is giving me this sort of uh, smooth result, but this is not uh, actual geometry. So that way we can, we, we don't need to worry about like anything here. We just like literally sculpt this sort of like membrane here real quick how are we doing on time six minutes we have six minutes and we might be able to get some uh detail here smooth 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 there we go and now i definitely want to use my move brush again and move things a little bit closer to to the connection point well i like this i like this sort of like jagged the edge that we have on the on the underside there we go. I'm actually gonna give it one more division and maybe even two more divisions and just, okay, so now it is extra struggling with, because of the divide. So I'm actually gonna turn off dynamic subdivision. I'm gonna just like play around with like normal subdivision here. And as you can see, we can give this very nice other texture. It's, it's thin right now. This is just a thin geometry, which is fine. We're at a half a million polygons. So it's a little bit too much, but uh, should be good for this uh, quick concept right here. So again, just a, uh, couple strokes to to uh, symbolize that this is like this sort of like leathery effect actually let's go down one subdivision level remember when you're working with low subdivision level it's it, low subdivision levels it's a little bit easier to to manage the different uh, elements that we usually have so there we go there we go there we go perfect that looks that looks great so i'm just gonna grab this guy i'm gonna go see plugin and i'm gonna of course mirror this to the x-axis it's gonna be a lot of uh, subdivision or a lot of, of polygons, but there we go. Like that, that looks pretty damn cool. Now make sure that if we want to see it on the other side, we're gonna say uh, ba -ba -ba visibility. No, not visibility. Display properties uh, double, so that we can see both sides of the of the thing right there. Uh, now we can go back to our character right here, and uh, I think I think we're good to add a little bit of uh, like just general detail again. Just same same like sort of like quick concept techniques that we've been using uh, so far. So I'm gonna go for like this leathery skin effect with spray. And I'm definitely gonna turn this into C-sub and, and a low uh, dynamesh. And as you can see, we can just break up the surface so that we don't have any like smooth surfaces anywhere in our character. And we create this sort of thing. There we go. And then we can go with our Damien standard and start giving it some like main like wrinkles, wrinkles that you will not be able to get from like just your normal uh, Dynamesh. Will you get from the from the other thing? Um, I think arms would be great here. So even though we're not, let's see if we have enough time. So I'm gonna go mesh mask lasso. Are we still in Dynamesh? I think we are, right? Oh, don't crash, Maya. Or Zebrush, don't crash. Don't crash now. I know you can do it. I know you can do it. Oh my god, I'm losing time. Just three more minutes. We can do this. We can do this. Hopefully, Zebrush will recover. Um, Remember, I mean, <laughs> well, this is hanging. Let's see if... Uh, if it works, uh, Seabrush works with RAM. So the more uh, RAM memory you have, the more polygons you're gonna be able to get. I think I might have exaggerated here and that's why it's taking so long because it's uh, it's gonna try to reproject the Dynamesh into like this very like dense mesh, especially with the with the arm wings and stuff. Uh, so it might take a while to recalculate. So um, what do you guys say? Would you guys give me a little bit of a break here? Let me uh, pause the video real quick, wait for this to uh, finish and then we'll continue.
I'll trust you guys won't be mad. We're at the final like two minutes, so I'm just gonna. Oh, there we go. Okay, okay. See, see, we're listening to me. So uh, I think it's because of those things right there, like that very weird shape, uh, which is horrible. So I'm actually gonna just come back like that. Let's not do it. Let's not do it. Um, yeah. So as with this little time that we have remaining, uh, which is just like two minutes. I am gonna do something that I normally don't do, which is sculpt the teeth, like uh, directly here. So instead of uh, like modeling them with like actual tools, I'm just gonna sculpt them here and just like give it a, a general sort of uh, like teeth look. I'm even gonna use like the snake hook and let's like create some extra fangs here. Like that. It's gonna look a little bit weird, but we should be able to have a nice little uh, character here. So not bad for, again, 30 minutes of quick sculpting, right? And again, remember guys, we're gonna be boating, we're gonna be boating on the on the um, on all of the characters that we've done so far on Friday. So on Friday, after you've watched the video, which by the way, I'm, I'm stopping right here, one minute left, but I'm stopping. Um, on Friday, after we finish with the fifth monster, you're gonna leave in the comments on the Friday video, um, you're gonna leave in the comments which one was your favorite from, from the week. We had the mummy, we had Frank, Frankenstein yesterday, we have Dracula today, which is the, the, the vampire form for Dracula. And uh, and yeah, so uh, let's see let's see what we get tomorrow, okay? So this is it, guys. Hopefully you like. Let us know in the comments what you think. Make sure if you want to participate on the comments or in the description here, you're going to see a link to a Google Drive folder. You can drop your screenshots there. Try to take the challenge. 30 minutes, just 30 minutes. Try to do your best. You can do any of the ones that we've done throughout the week. Or if you want to try any, any other one, feel free to do so. And uh, yeah, that's it, guys. I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.